Oh hey, it came out on a Wednesday this time. That was really nice, guys. Howdy, how's it going? My name's Davy Chappie, and today it's time to take another trip down the unearthed Arcana train, because we are going over the new subclasses for the Bard and the Paladin. Now, I just want to mention that I do have a cold as I'm recording this, so apologies if my contamination reaches you through the internet. But, with that out of the way, let's begin. So, starting out, you have the very best class in the whole game, getting a new topical subclass in the form of the College of Eloquence Bard. These boys defeat their foes not with spells and blades, but with facts and logic. And when they're not using powerful, persuasive tools to make everybody else feel like tools, then they're using a hugely upgraded bardic inspiration to hamper enemies and get allies writing letters to relatives and relishing my elegance and eloquence, but the actual abilities that you get when you channel Ben Shapiro are that you can cast Calm Emotion an amount of times equal to your Charisma modifier, and you can also spend a bardic inspiration, choose an amount of people, also equal to your Charisma modifier, and those people can understand you no matter what, and you get advantage on Charisma checks made to convince them. After that, you get the ability to use UNDENIABLE LOGIC to spend bardic inspiration that'll either damage or heal someone, and also either give them advantage or disadvantage on the next saving throw. Finally, your capstone power is an absolutely ludicrous steroid to your bardic inspiration, which is letting allies keep the dice if they used it on something that didn't end up succeeding anyway, and letting you use your reaction to give a successfully used dice to someone else free of charge. I'm pretty sure that I've made the point that the subclass heavily prioritizes the bardic inspiration ability over all others, and honestly, that's a pretty cool aesthetic. Until level 4, you're not actually getting more bardic inspiration die, so no matter how much you can do with it, you're always resigned to how many you have based off of your charisma mod. It does worry me that the subclass isn't as strong as the others until the end, since Call Emotions isn't the flashiest spell in the world, but the way that it's set up leads me to believe that this subclass was intended to keep the party out of fights in the first place. As one of the few attempts at a subclass that doesn't solve all of its problems with a loaded crossbow, I appreciate having the chance to not throw away my shot at diplomacy. Now, moving on to a class that ironically does actually have one of the other few non-violent subclasses, the Oath of Heroism Paladin is definitely not one of those. Instead of being a lame goober that talks their way out of problems, the Oath of Heroism punches them in the face! Fueled by the power of He-Man, Achilles, and Fat Thor, this action paladin plays the part of the stereotypical 80 Saturday morning cartoon hero that's here to eat ass and chew ass, and it's all out of gum. Starting out, the Oath of Heroism can use its channel divinity to either gain advantage on athletics or acrobatics checks, or lower their critical threshold to 19 instead of 20. After that, the hero can relish in their mighty deeds, meaning that they can either heal allies or frighten foes every time that they either score a critical hit or reduce an enemy to zero. They can also use their reaction to add their charisma to their AC and get a free attack if that attack then misses, and their capstone ability turns them into a real hero, giving them a 10 minute super buff that gives advantage on all charisma checks, lets attacks auto hit once per turn, and lets your saving throws auto succeed as a reaction. Now the bard I thought was pretty fine, if a little underpowered, but what in the double dutching didgeridoo is this subclass? That mighty deeds feature is wildly inappropriate, I mean it's crazy. At level 7, at no cost to the paladin, they can choose a charisma mod's amount of people, and then heal them for 1d6 plus charisma mod, or they can fear their enemies for a turn, once per turn, every turn, with the only stipulation being that they have to either defeat an opponent or get a critical hit, which their previous feature turns into a 1 in 10 chance of happening. What in the frosted flakes is going on here? The rest of the subclass is pretty nice. I do think that giving an increased hit chance on the one class that can choose to dump a 5th level smite into their damage after they see the roll is a pretty dangerous game you're playing, but that mighty deeds thing is just as silly as the recent monk true self capstone. Only this one shows up right at level 7. I know it's only temporary hit points, but in the heat of a fight, that tends to stop mattering. Overall, it's interesting to see these two classes paired up. They're both charisma casters with a large focus on helping out the rest of the party, but the subclasses couldn't be further away from each other. It's a nice contrast. And while the Eloquence Bard will no doubt be my preferred choice because I enjoy playing a social game, and let's be real, I can't help blowing that flute, I do hope that the Oath of Heroism Paladin gets that one skill patched up because the rest of it feels like a good addition to a class that sorely needs more additions. But that'll about do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like, comment, destroy that subscribe button with all your keyboard warrior powers, ring that bell to make YouTube tap out in awe of your sick debating skills, and maybe support me on Patreon so that I can keep churning out all these UA videos as soon as they appear. But yeah, Davy out.